in the last lecture we had tried to derive an expression for the self inductance of a distributed winding on the stator of a salient rotor cylindrical stator machine. In order to do that what we had done was first look at the MMF distribution generated by exciting the stator winding as you travel around the circumference of the air gap. We plotted that distribution and we found out the fundamental component of that distribution and then that was resolved into two directions along the axis of the pole phase and along an axis 90 degrees to that of the pole phase and then we tried to find out the net flux linkage in the stator winding. In order to do that again we considered an elementary coil in the stator winding found out the flux linkage of the elementary coil and then using that expression we perform another integration over the span of the winding and when we did that what we have is an expression here. This expression was the flux linkage of the elementary coil and then in order to get the flux linkage of the entire winding we integrate over the span of the winding, the span of the winding being denoted by beta and we were integrating that and you got psi s equal to this much. Now let us try to simplify this relation and proceed further. The integration that we have done when you substitute the limits the first term that is sin of gamma minus theta r going from pi minus beta by 2 to pi plus beta by 2 can then be written as sin of pi minus theta r plus beta by 2 minus sin of pi minus theta r minus beta by 2. So, this is of the sin a plus b minus sin a minus b form. So, this is 2 times cos of pi minus theta r into sin beta by 2 which is nothing but minus 2 cos theta r sin beta by 2. The second part of the expression can then be written as cos of gamma minus theta r going from pi minus beta by 2 to pi plus beta by 2 which is cos of pi minus theta r plus beta by 2 minus cos of pi minus theta r minus beta by 2. This is of the cos a plus b minus cos a minus b form. So, that is nothing but minus 2 sin pi minus theta r sin beta by 2 and therefore, the expression for the flux linkage can then be written as psi s equals 2 and we will take this 2 also outside which means it is 4 f hat z mu naught r l into cos square theta r by l g d plus sin square theta r by L g q multiplied by sin beta by 2. Because the sin beta by 2 expression is common to both we can take it out. Now, this can further be simplified as 4 f hat z mu naught r l into 1 plus cos 2 theta r by 2 times L g d 
plus 1 minus cos 2 theta r by 2 times L g q into sin beta by 2. And we rewrite this as 4 f hat z mu naught r L 1 by 2 L g d plus 1 by 2 L g q plus 1 by 2 L g d minus 1 by 2 L g q into cos 2 theta r into sin beta by 2. Now, let us define two inductance terms, one which we will call as L d, uh, there must be a term I s here that is missing this is I s and there is also a term I s that was missing there. Okay. Now, we will define two inductance terms one of which we will call as L d which is 4 times f hat z mu naught r L by L g d and f hat being 8 times um, oh, i s is there inside that. So, that is right i s would not come here explicitly i s is already embedded in f hat um, so, let us first expand this term f hat is nothing but 8 times z i s by 2 pi sin beta by 2. This expression we get from our earlier derivation of uh, earlier derivation as is seen here where we try to get the amplitude of the fundamental component of the MMF distribution that was our f hat and therefore, we substitute that here and using this then what we have is psi s is nothing but 32 times z square sin square beta by 2 mu naught r into L divided by 2 pi into 1 by 2 L g d plus 1 by 2 L g q cos 2 theta r multiplied by i s. Now, we will define an inductance term L d as 32 z square sin square beta by 2 into mu naught r L by 2 pi into L g d and another inductance term L q as 32 z square sin square beta by 2 mu naught r L by 2 pi into L g q. This inductance L d is representative of the assumed cylindrical rotor structure with an air gap of L g d which is a smaller air gap and another inductance L q which is representative of a cylindrical rotor structure which has an air gap of L g q which is a larger air gap and the larger air gap is the one that is present along the quadrature axis, axis 90 degrees to that of the pole phase. So, we will call this as quadrature axis inductance, quadrature axis inductance and we will call this since it represents the inductance at the smaller air gap and therefore, the inductance along the axis of the pole phase we will call that as the direct axis inductance. We 
with this then the expression for psi s can then be rewritten as psi s is equal to L d by 2 plus L q by 2 plus L d by 2 minus L q by 2 into cos 2 theta r multiplied by i s and therefore, the ratio of psi s to i s which is nothing but the self inductance of the stator is then given by this term. Therefore, we can write L s is L d plus L q by 2 plus L d minus L q by 2 into cos of 2 theta r. Note that the inductance in the inductance expression we have derived like this. What we are essentially determining is the flux linkage and in determining the flux linkage we are assuming that the MMF generated by the stator produces flux which crosses the air gap and goes into the rotor and therefore, all of this flux would link in some manner coils that might be on the rotor and therefore, this flux linkage and hence the inductance that we have derived essentially represents the magnetizing inductance of the stator winding. In order to determine the total self inductance therefore, one has to add the leakage inductance component L L and leakage inductance which by definition closes itself in the air gap which might be in the air gap between the stator and the rotor or it might also be due to flux linkage which is there in the end windings. So, all those effects together add up and is lumped into one leakage inductance term which we add as L L. So, the total self inductance then is this leakage inductance component plus the magnetizing inductance term. Now, note again that the form of the inductance then has one term which is constant which does not change and another term which varies as cos of 2 times theta r which means that over an angle 0 to 360 degrees if we now plot this inductance with respect to theta r let us say that this is 180 degrees and that is 360 degrees and 0 degrees. This curve would then look like this cos 2 theta r variation happens over and above a DC value which is leakage inductance plus this L d plus L q by 2. So, let us denote that by this average line. Now, over and above this you now have L d minus L q by 2 into cos 2 theta r and therefore, at an angle theta equal to 0 this inductance is really maximum. and then at an angle theta equal to 180 degrees you find that this becomes cos of 360 degrees and therefore, this completes one cycle of variation in a span of 360 degrees. So, if we start here and then it goes up to here. So, and then in the next 180 degrees it completes one more cycle. So, you have two cycles of variation within 0 to 360 degrees of the mechanical rotor angle. If we neglect the leakage inductance if we are plotting only the magnetizing inductance part then this level would denote L d 
this would denote L q, then the mean is given by L d plus L q by 2 and this amplitude is then given by L d minus L q divided by 2. So, this would then be the form of the expression. Now, if we look back at what was the plot obtained through finite element study for a particular winding, we saw again a similar distribution from 0 to 360 degrees, 0 to 360 degrees you see that there are two cycles of variation. Therefore, there must be a cos 2 theta term and a mean term which you have and the expression is as what we have derived. Therefore, whether the winding is going to be concentrated or distributed, the form of the expression remains the same. We had earlier looked at a single coil on the stator and a salient pole rotor as it rotates what will be the nature of inductance variation that was the plot that we saw earlier. Now, we find that the distributed winding also behaves in the same way. In fact, if we now look at those two expressions, if we make an equivalent number of turns by looking at these expressions, then one can arrive at an equivalent number of turns between which the distributed winding must have in order to be considered as a concentrated winding. So, the nature of the expression still remains the same. Now, AC machines do not just have a single winding on the stator, they have many windings on the stator. Normally, a three phase AC machine has three windings on the stator consisting of R, Y and B phases. Therefore, we have now looked at the self inductance of the rotor, we have looked at uh, self inductance of the stator. Now, we need to also see what will happen if you have one more winding on the stator, which will then mean there could be a mutual inductance effect between these two windings. So, how does the expression for mutual inductance look like? Now, let us understand how the machine geometry looks like before we get into the mutual inductance part of it. So, let us now see how the uh, machine is going to look like. Let us see a picture. Now, here you have an image which we have seen previously in animation. Now, it is just a snapshot of that animation. In this case, we have a four pole stator winding and what is shown is just one pole pair portion of it. So, we see here that the coil enters here one side of the first coil so to say and then the coil closes with the other coil side. There may be many more turns in a coil which is multi turn coil, but here we are only considering a single turn <coughs> to simplify the view and therefore, it goes around comes here and then around the circumference on the other side it goes that completes one turn and then the coil has a second turn which goes around here and then comes up. Now, this would be the way the winding would be represented or would look like in the actual machine. Now, in this case what happens is that you would have within this region, within this circumference of the stator, you would have a large MMF and the MMF decreases 
as you go outside the axis of the MMF would then be situated there and from the center if you draw a line to this point and you take it out. So, that would be the direction of the axis of the MMF produced by this winding. Now, in the electrical machine there are likely to be more than one machine windings and let us look at the developed view of this that is the way normally machine windings are represented. This is just to see how the spatial axis are then separated. Now, that particular one winding is then shown here you can see that this coil comes in this turn comes in and then travels around goes to slot number 7 comes back and goes here. So, what we have shown in the earlier figure in this figure is the R phase shown only up to this point beyond this is not shown. Now, in this case what we have been seeing so far is that if we plot the MMF distribution of this stator winding since there is going to be flow of current in this the flow of current in this bar let us say is going in to this and then this current goes along this bar here also you have current flowing in and here you have current flowing out here you have current flowing out. The nature of the MMF then since currents are flowing in here you have a variation assuming that the slotting is not there and whatever is spread is spread uniformly this we have discussed earlier. The MMF distribution may be drawn as a straight line till this point and then it remains constant until you reach here and now the currents are flowing in the opposite direction. So, it decreases linearly and then it remains constant over this region and so on. So, now you have this is the trapezoidal nature of the MMF which we have seen when we considered the distributed winding self inductance the same thing that happens here. And if you plot the fundamental component of this that would reach a peak right at the middle and therefore, the axis of the R phase winding is considered to be along the place where the maximum of the fundamental component occurs and that is at this point. Now, if you consider the coil that is marked in green. So, you have current flowing in here, current flowing in again current flowing in and at these two points currents are flowing out and therefore, for the green phase the MMF distribution would look like this it is again linearly varying assuming that it is uniformly distributed and then constant here and then it linearly varies here and that would have its axis situated exactly here along this line. And now you see that there is a separation between the axis of these two windings. These two windings do not will generate maximum MMF along two different directions if excited. What we are now interested in is assuming that the R phase winding is excited. We know what is the variation of MMF around the air gap. We want to find out what is the flux linkage on this green stator phase. If we find out the flux linkage then the ratio of flux linkage to the exciting current in the R phase will give us the mutual inductance. One can also look at a picture of the machine as it would appear in three dimensions. So, as to get 
an understanding of how the spatial axes are split so here you have again we have seen this as an animation before so now you see that the r phase winding occupies one phase spread here and another phase spread somewhere here and then the green winding occupies a phase spread here and then a phase spread here now the blue winding occupies here and here now if we look at the axis of the r phase winding that would come as we have seen in this case right in the middle of the last coil side of the r phase and here the first coil side of the r phase as we progress from left to right so that means in this diagram that would come you have seen an r phase here which enters here and you have the other set of r phase coil sides so that would come right at somewhere here as far as the green phase is concerned that axis would come somewhere here assume that you have a line connecting the center of the stator to these two dots and going out so those two will then represent the axis the angle between the axis is 30 degrees I mean uh, is 120 degrees remember that this is 120 degrees electrical now if you look at this arrangement you can see that there are 24 slots in 360 mechanical degrees and therefore the slot angle will be 360 degrees by 24 which is 15 degrees so mechanic this is 15 degrees mechanical being a four pole machine this is also equivalent to 30 degrees electrical and now one can see if the slot angle is 30 degrees electrical you now have here between the axis of the r phase and the green phase you have 1 2 3 and 4 slot angles which means that the phase phase displacement of the axis of these two coils is 120 degrees that is what we have written here this being a four pole machine this is the arrangement so let us instead consider only a two pole machine to simplify <coughs> our drawings so if it is a two pole machine then what would happen is you have the stator which is there and now in this two pole machine you are going to have two phases let us consider the r phase let us say the r phase is distributed here and the return conductors are placed here the axis of the r phase winding would then be as we have seen in between the last conductor of one phase spread and the first conductor of the other phase spread right in the middle of that so you have the axis of the r phase sitting here now the b or the green phase axis is 120 degrees displaced away from this so if we are to have that then you need to have a coil spread which has is a, its axis along this direction this being 120 degrees if that is the case then you must have 
the coil here. So, this figure means that you are having conductors that are uniformly spread in this region, uniformly spread here, uniformly spread and uniformly spread. Let us assume that this uniform spread is as before Z conductors per radian. We have seen all this before. Now, we are going to find the mutual inductance between these two winding, mutual inductance between the two winding. And in order to do that, we are going to consider R winding to be excited. and find the flux linkage with G wind. This is our approach. So, how to do that? As before, we try to draw the MMF distribution of the R phase. We know that the MMF distribution, the wave shape is known and then we resolve that MMF distribution into Fourier series and consider only the fundamental and we know that the fundamental of this MMF distribution will be F hat the amplitude of the fundamental of the MMF distribution will be F hat is equal to 8 times Z by 2 pi into I s into sin of beta by 2 where beta is the phase spread. This we know. Now, what we want to do is to find out flux linkage with the G phase. If you remember how we did the X derivation for self inductance, we, we took an elementary coil in the winding in which we want to find out the self inductance, found the flux linkage there and then we did another integration. So, we will follow the same approach. Now, we need to consider an elementary coil and as before we will consider this axis for alpha that is alpha equal to 0. We will consider an elementary coil at some place here which is at an angle gamma from the alpha reference axis. So, a small angular displacement of d gamma here and then the elementary coil, elementary coil at gamma having number of turns equal to z times d gamma. So, what we have is a coil here. The return conductors of that coil will be at this point. We want to find out the flux linkage. How to find out the flux linkage? We will have to integrate over an area spanned by this coil that is located at gamma. So, in order to derive the expression for mutual inductance, we consider the flux linkage in this elementary coil at gamma and that can be written as d psi s which is the elementary flux linkage. That is then given by the number of turns in this elementary coil that is z times d gamma multiplied by the flux that is going to pass through at any given angle alpha. This expression is similar to the ones that we have written earlier that is F d at alpha divided by the reluctance let us call it R d and then F q at alpha divided by the reluctance R q. 
we know that R d is the length of the air gap L g d divided by mu naught R L d alpha and R q is L g q divided by mu naught R L d alpha and therefore, this expression becomes z times d gamma multiplied by f d at alpha is nothing but f hat cos theta r multiplied by sin of alpha minus theta r divided by l g d plus f hat sin theta r multiplied by cos of alpha minus theta r divided by l g q and multiplied by mu naught r l d alpha. So, from this, this is the flux linkage in the elementary coil due to the flux passing at a given angle alpha along the span of this elementary coil and in order to get the flux linkage of this elementary coil, let us call that by the term delta psi s. That is then integral of this d psi s, the integration performed with respect to alpha as we move along the circumference of the stator, the inner circumference of the stator. In this case, alpha goes from gamma minus pi to gamma. Um, no, it is not gamma minus pi to gamma, it goes from gamma to gamma plus pi. Remember that this coil ultimately has to have an axis 120 degree displaced with respect to the first coil that we, con that we are considering. When finding out the self inductance of this coil, we had considered integrating along integrating along this area and now when this axis has shifted we need to do the integration there and therefore this is gamma to gamma plus pi and that can then be done as z times d gamma remember alpha is the variable of integration not gamma at this point of time therefore this is mu naught into r into l multiplied by f hat into cos theta r and then integral of sin theta r is minus cos of alpha minus theta r going from gamma to gamma plus pi and then plus sin theta r sin of alpha minus theta r divided by l g q. This again goes from gamma to gamma plus pi. So, if we look at the first part of the term, what we get is that is cos of gamma minus theta r plus pi minus cos of gamma minus theta r that is equal to minus 2 times cos gamma minus theta r and then we look at the second term that is sin of gamma minus theta r plus pi minus sin of gamma minus theta r that is minus 2 times sin of gamma minus theta r and therefore, this expression delta psi s can be written as 2 times f hat z d gamma mu naught r l multiplied by cos theta r cos of gamma minus theta r divided by l g d minus sin theta r sin of gamma minus theta r 
divided by L g cube. This is the flux linkage that is caused that arises in this elementary coil at an angle gamma and therefore, if we want to find out the flux linkage of the entire phase spread, this again has to be integrated. Now, the variable of integration is gamma and therefore, psi s is nothing but integral of this delta psi s. Now, the integration variable is gamma that varies from delta minus beta by 2 to delta plus beta by 2. Note that if we go back to the figure, gamma varies from this the angle between alpha equal to 0 axis and the midpoint the median line of this phase spread is equal to delta and from delta you are now looking at beta by 2 this side to beta by 2 that side and therefore, gamma varies from delta minus beta by 2 to delta plus beta by 2 and that is what we have written here and that then becomes <coughs> 2 times f hat z mu naught r l into cos theta r sin of gamma minus theta r by l g d this going from delta minus beta by 2 delta plus beta by 2 minus sin theta r by L g q into cos of gamma minus theta r it is integral of sin therefore, that becomes plus delta minus beta by 2 to delta plus beta by 2. And again let us take a look at the first term that is sin of delta minus theta r plus beta by 2 minus sin of delta minus theta r minus beta by 2 that is the sin a plus b minus sin a minus b form. So, that is 2 times cos of delta minus theta r into sin beta by 2 and then if we look at the second term that becomes cos of delta minus theta r plus beta by 2 minus cos of delta minus theta r minus beta by 2 that is cos a plus b minus cos a minus b form that is minus 2 times cos of uh, sorry sin of sin of delta minus theta r into sin beta by 2 and therefore, this expression psi s can now be written as 2 times we take this 2 also outside which means this becomes 4, 4 times f hat z mu naught r into L divided by I mean multiplied by cos theta r cos of delta minus theta r minus divided by L g d minus sin theta r sin of delta minus theta r divided by L g q multiplied by sin of beta by 2. And now, let us expand this f hat. We know that f hat is equal to 8 times z sin beta by 2 into i s divided by 2 pi. So, if we substitute this expression for f hat, then what you get is psi s is equal to 32 times z square sin square beta by 2 divided by 2 pi into mu naught r into L multiplied by cos of theta r cos delta minus theta r by L g d minus sin theta r sin of delta minus theta r divided by L g q multiplied by I s. Now, when we did the derivation for the self inductance of a particular phase winding, we defined two inductance terms 
one was L D which was equal to 32 times z square sin square beta by 2 into mu naught r l divided by 2 pi into l g d and we defined a term l q which was equal to 32 times z square sin square beta by 2 into mu naught r l divided by 2 pi into l g q. So, if we look at these definitions and our expression that we have derived now, what we can see is that psi s can be written as L d multiplied by cos theta r cos of delta minus theta r minus L q sin theta r sin of delta minus theta r this whole thing multiplied by I s. Remember this expression is flux linkage in one phase by exciting another and therefore, the expression in this is nothing but the mutual inductance between the two phases and therefore, we now have an expression for mutual inductance which is the ratio of psi s by I s which is L d cos theta r cos of delta minus theta r multi minus L q into sin theta r sin of delta minus theta r, where remember delta is the separation in the axis of the two phases. We have this figure here and this angle from here to here is what we call as delta, which is the spatial separation between the two axes. Now, if we call this as R phase and we call this as the G phase, then this is the mutual inductance between R and G, where the rotor axis is situated at an angle theta R somewhere in between. So, using this expression delta is the spatial separation, using this expression we can now uh, derive specific values for the case of a three phase machine, where normally delta is 120 degrees in the case of three phase machine. And the same expression can be used to derive the mutual inductance between R phase and G phase, R phase and B phase and G and B also and that will then help us to write the expressions for uh, the electrical equations for the machines. Having done this, our next task will be to write the expressions for the electrical equations and uh, see how we can compute the behavior of the machines using that. We shall see that in the next class, we will stop here for today.